Hello, grade 11 math class. Welcome back to another lecture. Uh, today we're going to talk about Z scores. Uh, Z scores in this first definition here um, is a standard value that indicates how many standard deviations away from the mean a particular value is. And it always turns it into a, a standard normal distribution curve, which is the next definition. Essentially what that means is instead of writing actual means and standard deviations, uh, it treats them all uh, with having a mean of zero and standard deviations uh, from minus three to plus three. Very rarely will you get a Z score that is smaller than minus three or larger than plus three. If you're getting something like 10, uh, you're gonna have to double check your work when we're working with Z scores. And then we're gonna work with uh, a table for Z scores, um, which I think all of this will make a whole lot more sense if we just start with um, an example. So we have Alexis playing in her school jazz band and they have an average of 16 and a half hours per week that they practice and a standard deviation of 4.2. So we would draw our regular curve, uh, our normal curve like this. We would have it going up and down and at the very middle, we would have, what do we say, 16.5, and then one, two, three, standard deviations above one, two, three, standard deviations below. And you just subtract the standard deviation from the mean or add it, if you're going this way, to find out what these values should be. So I've already done that. Uh, 20.7, 24.9, uh, and this one is 29.1. And down here we have 12.3 hours of practice, 6.1 hours of practice, and 3.9 hours of practice. Uh, the question says, Alexis practices an average of 22 hours per week. Um, we want to estimate what percent of the band practices a greater number of hours. So if we look at 22, that would be like somewhere in here, maybe? And ooh, you can't really see the, the arrow, but 22 would be somewhere in there. And so far, we've always been working with data. Um, we'd have a, like we'd be given a value that's exactly one of the standard deviations above or below or two above or below, but we're not given that this time. Uh, so what we're going to do is kind of approximate it. Um, we know that um, like from here, down we have 34 percent 34 percent and we add these percentages as well I believe that's 13.5 uh, 2.35 uh, and 0.15 if we add all of those up uh, we know that that side of it is about 84 percent of people practice less than that 84% practice less than that. And we know that if we go like from this line this way, that it's gonna be 97.5. So essentially, uh, Alexis practices somewhere between 84% and 97.5%. But how much, really? Um, where is that line actually drawn? And what we're going to do is we are going to find out how many standard deviations away from the mean 22 actually is. And this is standardizing it. So we have um, 22 is our value that we're given. And if we subtract the mean of 16.5, uh, we would get how far away from the mean it is. And if we want to find out how many standard deviations that is, we would divide by 4.2, which is the standard deviation. So how far away is it from the mean divided by the standard deviation? That'll give us how many standard deviations away from the mean that value is. And we get 1.3 standard deviations away. So for the purposes of this example, we are going to approximate that as 1.5. Um, so we're going to say that it's about half the segment. So about half the segment is below 
and half is above. So that means that we can split uh, that section in half. So that section was worth 13.5% originally. So if we split that in half, we would get 6.75%. And if we add it to the 84 that we already know is to the left of one standard deviation above the mean, we would get, so bear with me, we would have 84 plus 6.75% gets us 90.75%. So that's how many people practice less than Alexis. If we head back to the question, uh, how much, uh, how many, uh, what percentage practices more hours? So we would just take um, 100 and subtract 90.7% to get 9.25%. So 9.25% practice more, 91% practice less. So if we were to draw a line here, where 22 approximately is, we would say that 90.75% of people are on this side of it. And on this side of it, we would have 9.75% of people. So we have kind of just calculated a z-score. We're going to do some more examples. I'm going to show you um, a formula so that we can do this consistently and uh, talk about what z-scores really mean. So next example. So Haley and Serge are, I guess I should scroll down. Haley and Serge are, um, run two different tracks as part of a running club. Their times for the two runs are shown below. So there's Vancouver and Lake Louise. Uh, we have altitude. We don't want to worry about that. We have the average. We have the standard deviation for the runs. And then we have Haley's times and Serge's times. So for the first question, we're just going to be focusing on Haley. Um, determine at which location Haley's runtime was better than when compared with the club results. So essentially, was Haley above the mean, below the mean, um, and by how much? And which one was better? So let's calculate z-score. So a z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean. So a z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. This is the formula for it. Oh, you can't see that. Of course you can't. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to get to it. There we go. A z-score is the number of standard deviations of the, away from the mean. And here is the formula. So a z-score is equal to our value. Subtract the mean. x-bar is the average of the mean. And divided by... The standard deviation which if you remember from your calculator is that little circle with the line on top Sigma so what we're going to do is we're going to take these values um, and see which um, in which place Haley did better so for Vancouver let's start here the value that Haley had for Vancouver if we look in our table is 24.95 so we have 24.95 for Haley's value and the mean in Vancouver is 25.75 so that is our mean our x bar and we divide that by the standard deviation in Vancouver which was 0.62 seconds that's going to get us a z score of negative 1.290 and negatives are fine but if we are getting below minus 3 or above positive 3 that's where you're going to run into some problems, and you might have made a mistake. So between those, we're all good. So minus 1.290 uh, is a fine value to get. So that is our Z score for Vancouver, for Haley. That means that Haley was less than the mean, over a standard deviation less than the mean. Let's find out our Z score for Lake Louise. Lake Louise 
we have a, a, a time, a value of 24.77. That's here, Haley's time for Lake Louise. Subtract the mean for Lake Louise, which was 25.57. Again, I got that from the table. And divided by the standard deviation of Lake Louise, which was 0 0.60, to get a Z score of negative 1.333. So that means that again, Haley was less than the mean, was less than the average time. And by uh, 1.333 standard deviation, so that much less. So what we can do is we can compare these Z scores to see where she did better. And if we were to draw a curve, let's see, I'll draw a curve right there. We were to have our standardized curve so we're going to have a mean of zero and then we have one two three this is obviously very crudely done minus one minus two minus three her lake louise time or sorry her vancouver time will do first was negative 1.290 that's negative 1.290 we'll say that's right about here for vancouver her Lake Louise time was negative 1.333, so that's a little bit farther to the left. Right there, we'll say. Lake Louise was right there. What that would mean is that compared to the average, Haley did better in Lake Louise than she did in Vancouver. Um, the line indicates that she did, was farther away from the mean in a good way, right? If you're trying to run faster, you wanna be below the mean. So in Lake Louise, she did better. So, we can say is that Haley's time at Lake Louise has a lower Z score which means she had a better time. Ran faster compared to what you would expect, essentially. And that's what we're trying to get at with Z-scores. Let's roll down to B. Use Z-scores to determine which of Surge's runs were better. Okay, let's do it. Okay, Surge's score, so Vancouver Let's see, we had a surge time for Vancouver of 25.45. We subtract the mean, which is 25.75. We divide that by the standard deviation in Vancouver, which is 0.62 to get a Z score of negative 0.48. Okay, so surge was also less than the mean and means they get a negative Z score. That means that they're lower than the average for a runtime. That sounds great. Let's look at Lake Louise and see if uh, Surge can keep it up. Surge in Lake Louise ran a time of 26.24 when there was an average of 25.57 and a standard deviation of 0 0.60. Again, these are all for Lake Louise and I'm pulling these off of the table that was given at the beginning of the question to get a Z score of 1.12. So in this case, surge was actually slower than the mean, ran a time that was um, higher than expected. So we can tell from these z-scores that surge did better in Vancouver. Compared to the average, uh, surge did better in Vancouver, actually below the average in Vancouver compared to above the average by quite a bit in Lake Louise. Explain why a lower z-score represents a faster run. Uh, essentially, a lower z-score in this case means we're farther un under the mean. A lower z-score means we are farther under the average. And again, 
when I say average, I am always talking about mean, even though that might not be the right term to use, so I will just put that there, farther into the mean. Okay, let's go to the next question. So we have um, IQ tests. So IQ tests are sometimes used to measure a person's uh, intellectual capacity. The mean is 100 of IQ, so if you're 100, you're average with a standard deviation of 15. So someone could score 119 on this test. How does this compare with the general population? So let's just really quickly draw two curves. Ooh, those are ugly, but I'm okay with it. Uh, this one is our IQ curve. So the mean of 100 with 115, 130, and 145. And then 85, 70, and 55. And if we were gonna draw that on a standard curve, we would have zero, one, two, three, minus one, minus two, minus three. And these again are standard deviations away from the mean. Minus one away, positive one away. 119 would be just above, right about there, right? So on this curve, it is just above the one. So we're gonna expect our Z score to be somewhere around one. Uh, let's go. Z score is equal to the number that we're given, 119, subtract the average, which for IQ scores is 100, divided by the standard deviation of 15 given in the problem. So a Z score of 1.266 represents 119, 1.266. So that means that 1.266 standard deviations above the mean, but now that we're not comparing it to anything, like what does that actually mean? And to find out what that actually means, we are going to use our Z score table. So use Z score table. And if you flip the page, you'll see this insane table, which I have not looked at for a while, but that's okay. Um, I mean, a crazy amount of numbers. And on one page, you're going to see all negative Z scores on the left. And on the right, you're going or on the next page, you're going to see all positive Z scores on the left, it might be cut off a little bit by the hole puncher, but the negative 3.4 to positive 3.4, those are the Z scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for our Z score of 1.266. Uh, let's see, we do not have 1.266, but we can get to 1.2. So I'm gonna show you on my Z table here. So I've got, this is the negative side. You can see all the negative Z scores. I'm going to go to the positive side because my value was 1.266. So I'm looking at my Z scores here. I can go to 1.2, but then what do I do? So 1.266 rounds to 1.27. You can see that. That's about 1.27. So I'm going to go over to where it says 0 0.07 at the top. So I go down to the line that's 1.2 and I get this decimal, 0 0.8980. And I'm gonna copy that down real quick before I forget it, 0 0.8980. And essentially what that four digit number tells you is the percentage of people or percentage of data that are to the left of that Z score. So 0 0.8980, if we multiply that by 100, to get a percentage, we would get 89.8%. And that means that 89.8% of people are to the left of that value, 119 IQ. So that means that this person is smarter than 89.8% of people. So what this means, 89.8% of people, of data I'm going to say, is to the left of that Z score. 
So this is going to be an important distinction as we get going, um, but it's to the left of that Z score. So if we go that way, it would be exactly 89.8% of people. That's obviously in a perfect world. Let's go with a couple more. Sorry for the long videos. We will persevere. Okay, let's do another one. Scroll through Z scores. Running shoes lose their sock absorption on an average 640 kilometers, the standard deviation of 160. Zach is an elite runner and ants, he wants to, let's change that right now, wants to replace his shoes only when 25% of people would replace their shoes when the sock absorption runs out. At what distance should he replace those shoes? Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find out um, where along this curve um, Zach lies so that we can turn that into a value that he should actually change his shoes at. So he says that he wants to change his shoes when 25% of people, uh, when only 25% of people would replace their shoes. So if we have a curve, When 25% of people would replace their shoes, that would be coming up this way, like not very many people are replacing them. We want 25%, so 25% or less. So we want a value that is 25% to the left of it when we draw it on our curve. Um, if we go back to our table, we can work backwards from what we just did. So if we look for 25% to the left of it, if I look everywhere on this positive side for a Z score, I do not see anything less than 50%, 0 0.5, right? All of these values are above it. So I'm gonna be looking on the negative side. So I'm looking for a value of 25% or 0.25. Where can I find that? Not here, 0.25, I see 0.25 here. When I get as close as I can, I get 0.2514 and it goes to 0.25. 2483, so somewhere in here. You can't see where I'm looking. Down here. I have 0.2514 and 0.2483. Those are as close as I can get to 0.25. So that would be negative 0.675. So negative 0.675. And I get that because I had negative 0.6. And if I go this side, 0.7, I would meet at here. And then I go like in between these, I'm going. So I add another 0.5. So I get negative 0.6575 for a Z score. What can we do with that now? Well, we know the Z score, we know the mean, and we know the standard deviation. So we can use a fancy algebra, good old algebra, to find out what value he should change his shoes at. So Z score is equal to the value minus the mean subtracted by the standard deviation. So we have a Z score of negative 0.675. We have a value which we don't know, that's what we're looking for, X. Subtract the mean, which is 640, divided by the standard deviation of 160. We would take minus 0.675, multiply it by 160, and then add 640 to get our value x. x is equal to 532. So that means that the value that um, Zach, Zach should replace his shoes at is 532 kilometers. Essentially, we took what percentage he wanted to be at. He wanted to replace his shoes when only 25% of people would. So on, this, on the um, normal curve, 25% of people would be to the left of that. We found the Z score on the table um, by finding where 0.25% would be. And we used algebra to rearrange our Z score equation to find out what the value would be, how many kilometers it would be when he should replace his shoes. Uh, let's head to your turn for Quinn. 
and uh, we'll do the next one together. So give it a pause and then come back. All right, so Quinn is a recreational runner. He wants to do it when 70% of people would replace their shoes. So on the Z curve, we have our mean. 70% would be over here. That's when they would be replacing their shoes. So um, let's see. That means that when 70% of people um, would replace their shoes. Yeah. So we are going to be looking for a Z score um, of 70 or 0 0.70. I just had to think about that for a second. So 70% gets us to um, a score on our table of 0 0.70. So we're going to look for that on our table to get our Z score. All right, let's go. Z score for 0 0.70 would be right in here. I see 0 0.6985, 0 0.07019, and there's nothing closer to 0.7 than that. So this would be 0.525, right in between here. 0.525. So Z score of 0.525. It's positive he wants to have 70% of the people to the left of him. So it's above half, so that makes sense. So we are going to plug that into our equation. 0.525 for a Z score is equal to the value that he wants to change his shoes at. Subtract the mean, 640, divided by our standard deviation of 160. We would get X of 724 kilometers. So he should replace his shoes at 724 kilometers ran. So he's less picky than Zach. Quinn is okay letting him go. Um, I think that we will leave that there and uh, we'll do example four. Remind me, we'll do it in class. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I'll see you soon.